Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I belong to two local wood turning clubs, one of which has a Saturday to get together once a month, and it is also our privilege to have as a member Paul Russell, who is going to present, incidentally, in the Chattanooga AAW uh, Symposium. But he was gracious enough to actually host the Saturday session this last time and show us how he does his series of that he calls Barely There. We brought lathes and, uh, and some of us attempted to turn our own one. Uh, I started to turn this one but failed because on my small lathe that's portable this was just simply too wild and wooly to, to actually turn. So I scaled back and did a much smaller one that my small lathe could handle uh, but it's same wood but uh, different style if you will different bend each one is unique as you as Paul does them so uh, I'll, I'll turn this one for you today but if, if you're going to Chattanooga be sure to look up and attend uh, Paul's webinar or not webinar symposium session and tell him hi for me let's Turn it. This wood is an apple limb that I pruned off a year ago. I left it outside in the sun and weather to get gnarly. At our wood turning get together on Saturday, I cut and mounted it to my 12 inch portable lathe. I turned the lathe down to minimum speed, but even then, that lathe could not handle the off balance wood. It was jumping all over. Impossible to do any turning on that lathe. Now, Okay, face shield in place. I have it mounted on my larger, heavier Powermatic 3520A with an additional 200 pounds of sand. The vibration caused one bag of sand to fall. Even with the weight, I have to carefully manage the speed. Definitely keep it in the very low range. This is starting off between centers. My first task, as usual, is to carefully mount, cut a mounting tenon. Woo! Now, even though the wood is secured in the chuck, I want the assurance of live center support. The lathe is still at very low speed. Here we go with the bowl gouge. Since the middle bend is the root cause of most of the offset pressure and therefore vibration, I decided to hit this area first so I can hopefully turn the speed up a little bit. Since it is impossible to predict exactly how this wood will turn, I have to move around and whittle it down gradually. At this speed, it is nearly impossible to get a smooth cut. I do stop frequently to assess progress and move the tool rest closer or to another area. As the wood gets thinner, I can turn up the speed. This helps me to cut faster and a little more smoothly. Even then, it is not a great surface. The bark was black and ugly, a lot split off, and I helped the remaining bark sessions, sections to go away also.
A quick test shows that it will probably stand up. A major concern and prompts a sigh of relief. Whew. Before the wood gets too thin and springy, I stop to drill a hole in the top. Then reset the live center into that hole. Sorry, you cannot see the drilling with this camera set. This wood is simply much longer than normal. Then a lot of power sanding with the lathe off and starting at 60 grit. Then a bath in walnut oil brings out the color of the apple wood. I carved off the tenon and hollowed the base. This piece was a wild ride. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Still, it is worth it. I thank Paul for his inspiration. If you are going to the Chattanooga Symposium, be sure to see his demo live and say hi. His explanations are will be best firsthand. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life, and that is why I keep harping on this topic. And it can save yours, but only if you use it. I will see you again next week with another wood turning video.